Alright, now there is a new thing in this lesson called Pythagorean triples. Alright, so you've probably, I don't know if you've ever done these before, but Pythagorean triples, very easy concept. A Pythagorean triple is a set of whole numbers, integers, um, probably really should say uh, counting numbers because whole numbers could include zero, integers could include negatives, so we, we really want counting numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. But a Pythagorean triples is a set of counting numbers that work in the Pythagorean theorem. So no decimals, no square roots, no fractions, anything like that. All right, we've already actually done a Pythagorean triple. Okay, let's go back and I'll show you one of the Pythagorean triples you did. Right here, nine, whole number, 12, whole number, 15, whole number. All right, so we did all of those. All right, so we're working on these Pythagorean triples and we had the 9, 12, 15. We also have another one in here, if I can find it real quick and show it to you that you already did. Here we go. All right, this one right here, seven. Our answer was 24, which is a whole number, no roots, no decimal, nothing like that, and 25. Okay, now, 7, 24, and 25 is one of the Pythagorean triples that we're going to talk about. Okay, so Pythagorean triples. Um, now, 9, 12, 15 is also a Pythagorean triple we're going to talk about, but we're going to reduce that um, Pythagorean triple down. 9, 12, and 15, all of those numbers are divisible by 3. All right, 9 becomes 3, 12 becomes 4, 15 becomes 5. So that's 3, 4, 5. That is a Pythagorean triple. You can check to see if it works. 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 9 plus 16 is 25, 5 squared is 25. It works. 3 squared plus 4 squared would equal 5 squared. The other one I just showed you, 7, 24, and 25. Okay, 7 squared is 49, 24 squared is 576, 25 squared is 625, 49 plus 576 is 625. Okay, You need to memorize um, some of these Pythagorean triples. I'm going to show you another one that works really easily. 5, 12, 13. 5 squared is 25, 12 squared is 144, 13 squared is 169, 25 plus 144 does equal 169. All right, so these are three of the most common Pythagorean triples out there. All right, make sure that looks like a seven, not a two. All right, so these are three of the most common Pythagorean triples out there. We can create many, many, many other Pythagorean triples off of these by using the concept of scale factor. All right, we learned about this in chapter six, that if I were to do a scale factor of two, if I do that to every single side, so three times two, four times two, and five times two, it will give me six, eight, and 10. Since those sides have the same exact proportion, the same scale factor, by side, side, side similarity theorem, the triangles are similar, which means the angles are congruent. And since this worked for a right triangle, we already talked about that, then six, eight, 10 would also have to work for a right triangle. If I multiplied all these by three, I would get nine and 12 and 15. That's one we, sh we showed you earlier. All right, that is a right triangle as well. I could multiply them all by 10 and get 30, 40, 50. Okay, we could do that over here. We could multiply all these by say four, get 28, 96, and 100. 28 squared plus 96 squared will equal 100 squared. And this all comes back to the concept of scale factor and similarity. So if you memorize just a, maybe these three especially these two here, they're pretty easy. This one's not difficult though, but memorizing these and basically multiplying them by something, you can come up with all kinds of Pythagorean triples. So let me show you how uh, a question might look. It'll say something like this. Find a Pythagorean triple that includes, um, let's go with, let's see, look we'll with 15. Okay, so there's a bunch of different ones we can get that include 15. So what you want to do is you want to come back to these. Remember, you're going to need to memorize them. You're going to look at these numbers here and say, okay, which of these numbers could become 15 by multiplying by something? And I can't multiply by a decimal because if I multiply by a decimal, we're going to get decimal answers. Remember, Pythagorean triples, by definition, do not have decimals or fractions or anything like that. Well, 3 could become 15. If I multiply by 5, or 5 could become 15 if I multiply by 3. Same thing here, 5 could become 15 if I multiply by 3. So I'm going to show you each of those. So I'm going to find a Pythagorean triple that includes 15. So I could start with 3, 4, 5, and I multiply everything by 5. 
So I'm going to show that here. We would get 15, 20, and 25. Well, if you take 15 squared, 225, you take 20 squared, 400, you add them, you get 625. Over here, 25 squared is also 625. This is going to work in the Pythagorean theorem. Well, what if you did a different one? Maybe you took 3, 4, 5, and you multiplied the 5 by 3. All right, and I'm going to multiply everything by 3, and I'm going to get 9 and 12 and 15. That's the same one we talked about earlier. Okay, maybe I come back to this 5, 12, 13, and I multiply everything by 3. So 5, 12, 13, and I multiply by 3. So I get 15, 36, 39. All right, you can check that one. 15 squared is 225. 36 squared is 1,296. If you add them together, you get 1,521. Well, what's 39 squared? It's 1,521. It works. Okay, so um, what's another one? Let's go find a Pythagorean triple. That includes 60. Okay, I'm going to give you a chance to just try this on your own. Okay, so find a Pythagorean triple that includes 60. So look back up here. See if you can find any of these numbers that could somehow become 60. And I want you to go ahead, I'll give you about 15, 20 seconds to do that. If it takes you longer than that, pause the video. Alright, hopefully you have one by now. If not, pause the video, get one done, then check yours. I'm going to give you a bunch of different examples. So let's say we start with 3, 4, 5, and I multiply everything by 20. That would give me 60, 80, 100. Well, what if I took 3, 4, 5, and multiplied everything by 15? That would give me 45, 60, 75. Well, what if I took 3, 4, 5, and I multiplied everything by 12? That would give me 36, 48, and 60. What if I took 5, 12, 13 and multiplied everything by 12? That would give me 60, 144, and 156. What if I took 5, 12, 13 and multiplied everything by 5? That would give me 25, 60, and 65. All of those are Pythagorean triples that include 60, somewhere in them. Here we have it as part of the A. Here are the B, here are the C, here are the A again, here are the B again, and so on. Now, there are some other ones. Um, there is 32, 60, and 68, okay? Um, but that comes from a different Pythagorean triple. Uh, that came from 8, 15, 17. I didn't include that up here, but 8, 15, 17 is also a Pythagorean triple, okay? And if we multiply this by 4, I would get 60. So there are some other possibilities. Now, last thing I'm going to show you is just some cool ways that you can come up with Pythagorean triples. Okay, every single number out there except for 1 and 2 is part of a Pythagorean triple. We already talked about 3, 4, 5. 6 we can get by doing 3, 4, 5 times 2. It gives me 6, 8, 10. All right, um, 7 we already did, 7, 24, 25. 8 obviously is a part of 6, 8, 10 or 8, 15, 17. 9 I could take 3, 4, 5 times 3. That would give me 9, 12, 15. But there is another one we can do for 9 that's a little harder to find. So here's a method that works for any odd number other than 1. This will not work for 1. All right, you could try it on 1 and you'll figure out why it doesn't work. All right, I'm going to go back to 3. So take any odd number, we're going to use 3. You square it. So step 1, square it. So 3 squared equals 9. Step 2, divide by 2. So 9 divided by 2 equals 4.5. Now, we usually don't like decimals, but we're going to leave this as a decimal for the last step. All right, now step three, round up and down. What do I mean round up and down? So we're going to take 4.5, and we're going to round it up to 5, and we're also going to round it down to 4. Now we take our original number and the final two numbers and we put them in order. So 3, 4, 5. Pythagorean triple. Okay, it works for any odd number. So I told you there's a different one for 9, so let's try it with 9. So 9. We're going to take it and we're going to square it. It gives me 81. We're going to divide that by 2. That gives me 40.5. We're going to round up to 41. We're going to round down to 40. 9, 40, 
41 is a Pythagorean triple. You can check it if you aren't sure. But 9 squared is 81. 40 squared is 1600. 81 plus 1600 is 1681. And guess what 41 squared is? It's 1681. So you can see that it works. All right, I'll show you one more example with an odd number, and then we'll show you with an even number, a uh, slightly different method. All right, so another odd number. Let's go kind of big. Um, 27. 27. So we're going to square it. Gives me 729. I'm going to take that and I'm going to divide it by 2. Divided by 2 gives me 364.5. I'm going to round that up and down. So 365, 364, and now I'm going to put them in order. So 27, 364, 365 is a Pythagorean triple. Now, there are a whole lot easier ways to come up with a Pythagorean triple. It includes 27, take 3, 4, 5, and multiply it by 9. You get 27, 36, and 45. It's a lot easier, but this is this works as well. It's kind of cool. All right, so now at even numbers. All right, so let's see, even numbers. Um, 4 would actually work. It would take us right back to 3, 4, 5. Um, but I'll show you it, and then we'll do it with a slightly larger number as well. So for any even number... Now, this doesn't work for 2 either. Okay, it's, the first one it works for is 4. So 4 squared, that's our first step again, is to square it. So we're going to start with 4, we're going to square it. We get 16. Instead of dividing by 2, this time we divide by 4. So 16 divided by 4 equals 4. Now, instead of rounding up and down, because there's not really any rounding, it's already a whole number, but we are going to go up and down. Go one up and one down. So from four, we go up to five, down to three. Okay, so when we go up one, we go up one whole number and down one whole number. And then this isn't the four that we're using. It just so happens to be the same as the original four. But we take the original number and our final two numbers. and put them in order, three, four, five. Okay, original number and our final two numbers. All right, so let's do a different even number using that same process. All right, so if you remember an even number, we're gonna square it, divide by four, go one up, one down, and then put them in order. So even number, um, let's do 12. All right, so here we go, we got 12. We're gonna do step one, we're gonna square it. It's gonna give me 144. I'm gonna take 144 divided by four, it's going to give me 36. I'm going to go up one, down one, and I'm going to put them in order. 12, 35, 37. Okay, that's Pythagorean uh, triple. If you aren't sure, once again, you can check it if you don't trust me. Uh, but 12 squared is 144. 35 squared is 1,225. If you add them together, you should get 1,369. And 37 squared is 1,369. All right, let's do one more. We'll do a bigger one. Um, how about, let's go with like a 36. Okay, so we gotta square it first. So we gotta do 36 squared. 36 squared is 1,296. Okay, we are now going to divide that by four. So 1,296 divided by four is 324. We're gonna go up one, 325 down one, 323, and then we put them in order. So 36, 323, 325 is a Pythagorean triple. I'm not gonna to try to do all that squaring in my head, so you can check it on your calculator if you want to. All right, and there you go. That's lesson 7.1, Pythagorean theorem and Pythagorean triples.